Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We've come to the final panel of this evening. Uh, in a way, it is uh, the panel that's uh, one of the most important ones during the symposium. It's a networking panel. It's one of the first activities during which we try to promote networking and project development. Um, the Turbo Presentation Panel is something that we introduced in Vienna last year. Uh, it is an element that we were asked by you uh, uh, in questionnaires, and we tried to responding to them. This year we have 19 participants uh, who will each have roughly about 90 seconds to present to you either their project, their institution, or their work uh, in the field of memory and remembrance. I'll start by reminding a little bit the rules, how the panel works. Um, as I said, each speaker has 90 seconds. I will have, um, you will hear a sound uh, um, before your time is up, after 60 seconds, leaving you 30 seconds to summarize what you're saying. Each one of you who sent to us a um, slide will be, have it presented behind him. We'll invite each speaker to the front over here. I would ask the audience to refrain from asking any questions or commenting during the presentations or afterwards. Uh, it will be all possible after the panel and especially during the reception afterwards. Uh, this year we're starting alphabetically in first name order and therefore I would like to invite Dr. Aaron Matter from the Committee of the National Remembrance to give the first presentation. We are just waiting for hmm? the presentation itself. <laughs> Is it working? Okay. One second, please. Right. So, uh, I am Aaron Mate, as it was said, the vice chair of uh, the co organizer partner of this symposium, the Committee for Hungarian uh, National Remembrance. Uh, I'm in an easy situation because each of you has uh, the conference package and within that you will find a small information brochure concerning my institute. But I am going to read out uh, the proper part of the Hungarian constitution or basic law uh, which uh, concerns my uh, committee. It says, the Committee of National Remembrance shall conduct research on the power mechanisms of the communist dictatorship and on the role of individuals and organizations in positions of power and shall publish the results of its activities in the form of comprehensive reports and other documents. According to that, uh, quotation over. According to that, the committee started its work. It is the end. 30 seconds, sir. Okay. So, according to that, the committee started its work on the 3rd of February 2014. Its task is to critically examine the recent past, promote public access to historical documents and sources, and fulfill the task of preserving the memory of victims of the communist dictatorship. The committee conducts research on hitherto unexplored sources in order to gain a better understanding of the overt and covert operations, power mechanisms, and cadre policy of the one-party state. Thank you very much. Anything else in the informational brochure? Thank you once more. Perfect. Thank you, sir. I would like to invite Mr. Dennis Bukon Bukon Bukonki from the Center uh, for the History and Geopolitical Studies of the Institute of History at the National Academy of Sciences in Belarus. Will you say ready, steady, go? Excuse me? You will say ready, steady, go? Or? Uh, you have to speak up. Oh, uh, sorry. You see me, then I start here? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Feel free. Um, feel free. <laughs> okay. Uh, you have information about me and my, about my center in your handouts, and that's why I'd like to 
um, say more about our studies in remembrance field. Uh, we completed several research devoted to place of historical memory in Belarus. Among them, one is about the role of the Second World War in historical memory. Second, uh, second one about September 1939 as a place of memory. Our research suggests that a set uh, of ideas about the Second World War is one of the most important for the formation of the Belarusian national identity. Uh, this was also indicated by the results of psychological research, which calls the victory in the Great Patriotic War is the most significant event to be proud for Belarusians. For our country, this war is still patriotic, and the main result, we consider the victory over Nazism. In the same time, the Second World War in the consciousness of Belarusian is strategy, like some kind of terrible test that proves people right not only to exist, but be respected for such sacrifice. And uh, mentioned uh, elements in our opinion have some similarities with the emerging concept uh, of a common European historical memory. And uh, we have uh, some uh, uh, issues about uh, uh, about uh, what influence uh, on our uh, historical identity. It's, uh, for example, ideas of conducting in some countries offensive historical policy, uh, populist approach to convenient topics in national history, same as attempts of privatization of victory and aggressive rhetoric uh, in respect of any review of the events of the Second World War. Thanks. Thank you, sir. Next, I would like to invite Ms. Um, Ekaterina Boncheva. Uh, Ms. Boncheva is a newspaper journalist and a contributor to Radio Free Europe. Uh, she co-authored the Bulgarian Gulag Witness, a documentary collection focusing on camps in Bulgaria, as well as being a member of the Comdos. Thank you, Pavel. I'm not in a brochure. Would you give me 30 seconds more? <laughs> Unfortunately, I can't. <laughs> Okay, uh, my organization, ComDOS, is an independent state institution established by law, adopted in 2006, uh, um, with 32 collections, name taken from the archives of the SS, the committee, my committee, experience in the field of research and publication. New volumes are released annually to explore topics of public interest, such as uh, the KGB and the Bulgarian state security, the state security and Stasi, uh, Prague Spring and state security. In 2014, the committee successfully completed a partnership initiative investigating the, the events and processes in Bulgaria, political, economic, public, and cultural life after Soviet dictator of the Stalin death, containing a collection of documents of an exhibition presented under the title of Destalinization, the Dilemma of Controversial Decade. These um, files for the first time make public covers key political events, public uh, responses, economic changes, and internal political shifts in the decade after Stalin's death. The Bulgarian public uh, takes uh, interest in Hungarian events, but few dare to speak openly. Although them in Bulgaria poet Jordan Ruskov, who is arrested and sent to prison for seven years for his poem, Call for Freedom, dedicated to the Hungarian people. Comdos, uh, which is an independent um, Institute uh, announced affiliation of Bulgarian citizens to the Communist Security Party and to date over 3.5 million records are housed in our modern archive facilities. And in the end, although to consider USSR most loyal and passive satellite, unlike Germany, Hungary, Czechoslovakia, and Poland, uh, Bulgaria is the birthplace of the first and longest armed resistance against the communist regime. The so-called Gorian movement, or movement of the mountain men, starts in autumn 1944 upon the Red Army invasion into Bulgaria and continues until 1956. Uh, it's a uh, 12-year-long resistance, and this destroyed the myth that Thank Bulgaria you, never Benchella. rebelled against the Soviet regime. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Ms. Benchella. 
next, I would like to invite the director of the Museum of Occupation of Latvia, Mr. Gunnar Nagels. Um, the Museum of the Occupation of Latvia has about 60,000 items in its collection. One of these items is this pair of felt boots, which you can see here, uh, worn by Jatro de Krogzeme as a deportee in Siberia. On 14 June 1941, the Soviet occupation regime sent her, along with her two-year-old daughter Maruta, 5,300 kilometers from their native Kandava in Latvia to the Krasnoyarsk region in Siberia, while her husband Ernest was sent to the infamous Vyatla Gulag camp 2,200 kilometers from their home. He perished in prison after only six months. Jatruda escaped in November of 1948, but was recaptured and sent back one month later. Her daughter died in a hospital in Krasnoyarsk in 1953. After 14 years in exile, Jatruda was finally allowed to return to Latvia. This is one of the stories told by the Museum of the Occupation of Latvia. In addition to the objects in our collection, we have about 2,500 video interviews with witnesses and survivors. Most of our video interview archive has been digitized in cooperation with Stanford University Library and will be available for researchers there and in Latvia. Our collection is expanding rapidly as soon as it will be too late to recover materials or interview eyewitnesses. The museum has ongoing cooperation also with other international partners and we invite you to visit us and work with us. Thank you. Next, I'll ask the representative of Terra Recognita, Istvan Kolaic. Kolai, I beg your pardon. Is he here? I guess we'll skip. Um, therefore, Mr. Jacek Kubera from Poznan's Institute for Western Affairs will present his institute. Good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen. The Institute for Western Affairs was established in 1944 and its origins uh, tie closely to Poland's experience of World War II and of the westward shift of Poland's borders upon the end of the war. So the Institute's research team investigated historic, cultural, social and economic issues underlying Poland's new post-war po geographic position. It also monitored the integration of the recovered territories, Poland's western and northern territories, with the rest of the country. One project which has gained widespread recognition at home and abroad comprised a series of contests for, for diaries by residents of recovered territories held in 1956, 1966 and 1970. Simultaneously, the Institute has conducted research on, on World War II and the German occupation in Poland, which makes up the Institute's World War II archive. Today, the Institute focuses on historic and uh, contemporary Germany, his, the history of Polish-German relations, and on European issues. Thank you very much. Mr. Józef Markocki from Association Form Theatre. Hello. My name is Josef Markowski. I'm a director um, of the Association Form Theatre, Theat Forme from Wrocław, Poland. Um, and uh, I would like to uh, present uh, the first one sentence. Our, our association is basic activity is the physical movement theatre. Through the theatre active, uh, we, uh, we are supporting also the uh, excuse me, uh, active uh, in supporting activity area. Uh, among them is helping victims of violence, uh, discrimination, helping the people who are cut off from the work market and uh, cultural heritage. In 90, 2012, we realized one, one program. It was performance, Night and Folk. 
uh, shit, I was not read it, I just, I just say it. And uh, it was presented in several countries and the students of artistic schools from different countries participated in this show. It was the, towards the Gross Rosen camp uh, in Lower Silesia in, in Poland. And, yeah, in evaluation, we have a one project for this year also, Lost Humanity. Uh, this is the, um, also uh, connected with the uh, you know, uh, um, stories of the people who was, were victims in the work camps in the, in the Lower Silesia, but in other departments, in other, uh, let's say, filias uh, of this camp, and also the Croatia and, and, and Serbia, and this, this, the concentration camps in, in Serbia. So this is, the, um, this is the point, and I would like to say only one Thank word. You. That is, the, we are looking to new forms of the expression of the historical, historical remembrance, not only just literal and historical you know, publications, you, also the theater in art. Thank you very much. Um, next, um, Ms. Uh, Thompsona, please. Hi, hello. Um, I'm another representative from Latvia, and we are a new museum, and it's a memorial built to a family and basically to all those uh, Latvians who did uh, risk their lives and saved Jews and also prisoners of war during the Holocaust. But there are two things why you have to come and visit the museum. The one, it's site-specific. It's built in their garden where they did um, risked their lives at the times when basically for the pack of cigarettes you could get out few people from ghetto you know and how do you explain it to uh, visitors to the school children wh what were those times um, also museum is built all in wood and cement and it smells like tar you know so like old boats and and nets um, and you can get l lost there so uh, all day we talked about uh, about the war and the, about the resistance from kind of the very big perspective. So we tell the stories from um, from the perspective of one family, where the daughter is in the Red Army, when the son is in German Army, when the rest of the family is trying to rescue Jews, and we also because of that we have lectures about the tolerance um, against anti-Semitism, about all kinds of prejudice that people live still today with, and so you're all welcome to come and visit, and even if you don't come and visit us, come and see our beautiful Riga. Thank you. Ms. Ludmila Tsoyotsaru. Good evening. So, my name is Ludmila Kojokaru. I'm here to introduce and to present towards your attention uh, information about activities of the institution I'm representing here. So it's, the name of the institute is, uh, is Institute of Social History Pro Memoria, and this is a research interdependent, interdisciplinary and independent research center uh, affiliated to the Faculty of History and Philosophy of the Moldova State University. Uh, the main aim of the Institute Pro Memoria is the promotion of historical scholarship dealing with the 20th history of uh, um, Europe through its academic research, public conferences, educational activities. The Institute Pro Memoria promotes a complex approach to uh, and on Soviet and post-Soviet history reflected by various historical discourses and mnemonic communities. Pro Memoria um, implemented during the um, last uh, four years several individual and collective uh, research projects dealing mainly with uh, memory and remembrance uh, of um, deported persons and the uh, Gulag um, period in uh, the Moldavian S S Soviet uh, Socialist Republic. Um, since 2015, promemoria activities are, are devoted to the project about recovering 
and historical investigation of the memory of totalitarian communist regime in Moldova. And uh, pro the project will present to a large audience. Thank you very much. Uh, well, time's welcome. A bit so we are open to cooperation. Thank you. Uh, next, Ms. Frize will tell us about us in NRS ongoing project in between. Good evening, everyone. My name is Magdalena Frize. I'm from European Network Remembrance and Solidarity, and I'm here to present project that we have implemented from the beginning of this year, entitled In Between Looking for Local Histories in European Borderlands. It was an education, it is still an educational project and program for students between 18 and 25 years old, and it's based on study visits in border regions. They're divided to teams of six, and they're going for collecting oral histories to digitalize um, domestic archives. And the idea was born out of the need to experience local histories and give an opportunity for young Europeans to discover border regions through personal perspective. It's an attempt at looking at memory of the past in, the, in individual dimension between members of a single families, between different families in the same region, and between the region. We are going to combine in the end of the year as a conference seminar, summing up seminar to try to combine and find some similarities between eight regions. I would like to encourage you to uh, visit our website. We'll soon open the recruitment process for the second edition. All information are on the website. Thank you very much. Thank you, Magda. <laughs> Next up, I would like to invite Professor Malkas Toria from Ilya State University in Tbilisi. Um, as, you, as you can see, uh, our um, uh, research center um, conducting a project uh, about uh, IDPs uh, from Abkhazia and South Ossetia region of Georgia. Uh, and it's called uh, Trapped in the Past, Silent Voices of uh, Georgian IDPs and Dilemmas of Social Integration. So the project focuses on um, mainly culturally and socially driven reasons of uh, uh, of everyday hardship and uh, at the margin of uh, society. Uh, and um, uh, this includes, for example, the stigma, um, uh, lack of empathy, uh, role of uh, media uh, in creating of negative stereotypes about IDPs, uh, constant longing of uh, to return to go home, it's a kind of uh, um, nostalgic memories about the homeland uh, and uh, uh, we conducted uh, uh, interviews uh, with uh, in, in the collective centers of IDPs in, in different parts of uh, country and also invited uh, for focus group meeting uh, representatives of uh, governmental agencies and NGOs who, who deal with the IDP uh, problems and then we created policy brief uh, uh, singled out, uh, singled out uh, concrete recommendations and uh, the, our main message was uh, to consider IDPs uh, out of uh, this uh, narrative of uh, uh, traumatized people uh, who just uh, live in a um, uh, confined world of IDPs. So uh, the main result also will be the academic uh, article in peer-reviewed uh, journal. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Mikhail Dragomir, who will tell us about the Stalin Towns Network. Hello, I'm representing the History Museum in Brasov, a beautiful medieval, medieval town in Transylvania, uh, which is also called Kronstadt because we have uh, German um, colonists and also Brasov by the Hungarian community. But between 1915 and 1960, we were called also Stalin. Of course, we don't have Russian community in Brasov. And um, this, uh, and our parents and grandparents still have fresh memories about that, uh, those times. 
those terrible times, and um, we would like to, to invite them to share the, these memories with the young community. Um, and that's why our project is starting to set up a new a network of the towns which were called Stalin, and that's why we are inviting you to join us and to support our project. Thank you. Mr. Mirian Budka from the Albanian Institute for the Study of Communist Crimes and Consequences. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm representing the Institute for the Studies of Communist Crimes and Consequences in Albania. It is a young institute uh, founded in 2010. Um, Albania is often regarded as the country with the most uh, brutal communist dictatorship, and our mission is to investigate, research, and highlight the crimes during those 45 years, and to inform the public opinion in Albania about uh, uh, the facts regarding their own history. These crimes and uh, this part of history remain still unknown to uh, the majority of Albanians and to majority of the world. We have, uh, as a population of 3 million, we have over 60,000 people deported and interned, 6,000 were killed, 37,000 of them were sent to prison just because of free opinion. Uh, our two main research uh, is uh, the encyclopedia, which tries to identify all, all the victims of uh, communist crimes, how many people have been fusillated and suffered it directly from communism, imprisonment, internment, and etc. Our greatest goal now uh, is to include our uh, research and our book into a school text so that students can learn the truth that has been uh, hidden for a very long time. And uh, for that, we will need help from uh, within, but also from counterpart institutes uh, all across Europe and more, uh, so that uh, we can gain an, an experience uh, dealing with the past to build a better future for generations to come. So we're looking to expand and cooperate with all other institutes uh, and uh, thank you. Ms. Monika Karenaukaite, I apologize for my pronunciation, uh, from the Genocide and Resistance Kaite. Research Center of Lithuania. Okay, so uh, our institution was founded in 1997 when actually the main laws defining uh, the w status of the victims of Nazi and Soviet crimes were adopted in Lithuania and the main laws uh, dealing with Nazi and Soviet past and we are functioning according to this law. Also, uh, we have quite strict uh, chronological boundaries. It's from 1940, 1990, those chronological uh, boundaries, it's according uh, to Soviet occupations of Lithuania and one Nazi occupation of Lithuania. Uh, well, we investigate the crimes against humanity, war crimes, uh, uh, various genocidal crimes, not only in the sense of historical research, but also we initiate some legal cases and also against the perpetrators, and also we try to issue those statuses for the victims to help them to feel more like accepted for the society. What else we are doing is, of course, archives and digitalization projects and historical research. Some projects I could mention, it's, for example, the digital digitalization of the KGB archives, which can be accessed online, uh, building of the databases with the victims of Soviet and Nazi crimes, electronic, they will be also maybe online one day, and like a warrior, a oral history, warrior other sources, and we do also uh, commemoration projects, uh, we do uh, build monuments and then admin administer all this uh, map of monuments regarding those uh, historical periods in Lithuania, well, like lots of things to say, uh, last but not the least is maybe uh, we could mention that we of course do the international co uh, collaboration and one project we plan it's uh, about the uh, Sinti Roma or Romani genocide and we uh, invite you to participate in this project with us. Please come to me if you are interested. Thank you. <laughs> Ms. Oana Ometa who will tell us uh, about the um, no one escaped punishment, how censorship changed gen uh, journalism after 1956. Yes, uh, good evening. Uh, it's more of a project proposal than an um, institution uh, presentation. It's about how censorship changed journalism after 1956. And um, 
Uh, I will tell you that in my country, because it's a small part for my research started at the Horror History Institute from Cluj-Napoca, I interviewed 20 journalists from Romania and I found out that uh, this point, uh, 1956, was the most, um, the major point in turning of censorship in Romania. And uh, maybe you can join me uh, for a project uh, in other countries from the Eastern Bloc uh, to compare uh, what happened uh, there. Uh, I will tell you just this. Uh, after um, uh, Hungarian Le uh, Revolution, from um, uh, Hungarian Revolution uh, in Romania, um, Dej, Georgiou Dej regime uh, had uh, witnesses uh, various uh, frames up against in intellectuals. So, uh, as uh, the president of uh, Hungarian uh, academies uh, said today, that uh, we must uh, use uh, personal history and memory as a source. Uh, maybe uh, a future project uh, will be to find out how revolution in Hungary influenced the journalism from the Eastern Bloc by using and interpreting oral history interviews. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Petra Seidlova from the European Shoah Legacy Institute. Thank you. Good evening. I am representing the European Shoah Legacy Institute, uh, which is organization founded by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the Czech Republic in 2010 in order to advocate and facilitate implementation of principles of the Terezin Declaration that was initiated by the Czech Presidency at the Council of the European Union and endorsed by 47 countries. Uh, the European Shoah Legacy Institute focuses on following areas. Uh, welfare of Holocaust survivors and other victims of Nazi persecution, restitution and compensation of immovable property wrongfully seized during Second World War, recovery of looted art and provenance research, and Holocaust education, remembrance and research. Ashley is currently working on many activities. The most important right now is organizing an international conference on restitution and compensations of the wrongfully seized immovable property in the EU countries. Uh, with title Restorative Justice and its Impact on Tolerance in Society. The conference will take place in the European Parliament in Brussels, November 2016. Thank you. Next up, Ms. Sandra Vok from the UNITAS Foundation uh, with a video presentation and a short introduction, roughly 30 seconds. 30 seconds? Hello. Um, I will start with a story. Kui mina alles Norvel olin, Norvel olin, lapse põlves mängisin, mängisin. Ei mina teadnud muud kui seda, muud kui seda, mis mina nägin silmaga, silmaga. The Estonians have one word they use for both song and story. And this was the beginning of a song, an old Estonian song, which says, when I was still very young, I knew only what I saw with my eyes. Facts tell us what happened. Theory tells us how it happened, but stories tell us what it felt like. What the Unitas Foundation does is dedicate its activities to developing such an aware and compassionate society through digital storytelling. I will show now one example of how it looks like, what, what we do. Thank you. Acceptance, 
and reconciliation are values which I believe are important for progressive societies, which is why I am working with Unidas. At Unitas Foundation, we collect memories, we spread knowledge, and we activate youth. Next up is Jiva Pabinch, Living Memory, and Ms. Viola Yakshova. Thank you. I would like to introduce you our non-governmental uh, organization, Živa Pamnieť, in English, Living Memory. Our first goal is care for living victims of totalitarian, totalitarian regimes, especially of uh, victims of national socialism. We care for their common legacy and we try to transfer their legacy to the further generations. So, uh, what we offer them? We offer them uh, free of charge any expert social counseling obtained to their rights to the state. We uh, do for them programs, educational and ex activization programs, and we offer them for free individual assistance and psychosocial, psych psychosocial uh, support in their homes. Um, mm, we founded, Živá Pamnieť founded a consortium of non-governmental organizations to benefit these victims in the Czech Republic. Uh, to make you, we help so 300 people in a year. Another goal is also special con counseling to uh, people, they request uh, payments from Germany, from the state in ghetto. We make uh, 930 interventions to our clients a year. The second branch of uh, our activities is informational and educational activities. We do something similar as we saw. We run an online teaching platform with audiovisual um, stories of survivors. Uh, we were supported by uh, experts of Humboldt University. And uh, another project I can tell you is, for example, project to uh, make youth in Czech Republic familiar with the tragic fate of uh, Bohemian, Moravian and Slovak Roma in Czech Republic. Thank you. Thank you for your attention. <laughs> Lastly, I'd like to invite Mr. Wojciech Kozłowski from the newly formed Witold Pilecki uh, Center for Totalitarian Studies. Thank you very much. Uh, hello to everyone. Uh, I always thought how to start this sort of short pre presentation after we have uh, watched the movie, we heard people singing here, so it's kind of quite difficult to say anything now. Uh, what I want to say is that if we have a new institution which has been just created like two, three weeks ago, uh, the whole idea is uh, and this, uh, the whole idea is to actually bring into the light, to discuss again, or to remind and remember and recall, and whatever other uh, words you want to use, the Polish experience of totalitarianism during the Second World War. Uh, there's a lot of discussion about the post-war uh, uh, period, but this part is somehow understudied, especially in terms of bringing this material to to the wider general public, including the foreigners and the foreign, foreign scholars, because most of this material is either in Polish archives, it's written in Polish, and those who don't have proper uh, skills in language, they have difficulties to get that. So like, now our idea is to do translatory efforts, to translate as much as possible of existing material, 
the source material so that scholars and other people who are interested in the past can actually have a look at it and they can make their own interpretation on this basis. Otherwise, uh, the center is just forming. So we are building our networks, we are just making first contacts, and we are very happy to cooperate internationally. And, well, the most important thing, research, reflection, and education. This are, these are principles we want to follow. Thank you very much. Thank you. That ends this panel. I would like to uh, kindly ask you in your materials, you'll find a questionnaire form. We do very much appreciate your feedback. If you wouldn't mind filling it out and returning it at the reception. Thank you. Okay, please uh, let uh, me add uh, some technical information now. Uh, we are coming now to a very important part of our program, the dinner which uh, will take place uh, downstairs. Uh, downstairs means the ground floor, so it's not, the, not that room uh, where the coffee breaks took place. Uh, for those guests who are from abroad, uh, buses to the hotel will leave tonight at uh, quarter past nine. Uh, and speaking about buses, tomorrow morning they will start uh, from the hotel at quarter past eight. Well, Enjoy your meal and see you tomorrow. Thank you.